7.20 on Monday. And that's it. Um, I didn't vlog yesterday by choice. And I have to say, it felt very, I don't know, I guess liberating. It just, it just was a nice relief. It was one less thing that I had to do yesterday and based on I mean I did take a very brief piece of footage because one of the things I did yesterday was I straightened up my closet not that my closet was a mess but it was things were out of place that really just needed to be put away that were just kind of in the way and had been in the way for a while so I finally made time to like just put stuff away and also took out a whole bunch of shoes that I don't wear and haven't worn in a long time and got those donated to like the little drop-off location uh, that's by my house. So I think I took some footage of the after effect of my closet being all cleared out. But that was really it. Like I just decided to spend the day really just being self-centered or selfish and only doing the things that I felt like doing and really only doing things that served me. And it was great. And I may do that every Sunday. Um, because it was really a test to see, like, how do you feel knowing that you're not really vlogging today, even though you made that commitment to yourself and just the general public? Um, how will you feel? Will you be okay? Are you going to be hard on yourself? Are you going to harp on it? And I did it. I actually felt better for not doing it. So I may, um, allow myself to continue to do that. As far as next year, I know a couple people have left comments like, what's gonna happen next year? Are you gonna vlog? I know for a fact that I won't upload every day like that, I absolutely positively know. Because as many of you have mentioned, it is a lot of work and it can be very taxing. Um, but I still feel like I'll upload on a regular basis. It may be very similar to what I did my very first year, where I just took footage throughout the week and upload it once a week. But even that has its own downsides because now I'm wading through a lot more footage, uh, which could take time. So I won't disappear in 2022. I just know that I won't be uploading daily and I'll find something that I feel like works better for me in terms of like managing my time and my stress levels and having proper balance. So, um, but yesterday was great. I woke up, I just, did the normal things where I will wake up, put my laundry away, pull out what I need for the next day. Um, I've been doing that before I work out so that after I work out, all I am doing is like really just focusing on the little part of the Bible that I choose to read for that day. So I woke up, took a spin class, like a very light 20 minute class, or it may even have been 15 minutes with Allie Love, did a 15 minute stretch. Um, that was after I got my clothes out. I don't know if I said that. I feel like I'm talking in circles now. That was after I got my clothes out and put my laundry away. And then after I did the stretching and the working out, I read the little section of the Bible that I decided I wanted to read that day. Um, we are just talking about Moses leading the people out of Egypt. That's what I read yesterday. And that's another thing that I'm teaching myself that I can set my own boundaries and do what I feel like is best for me. I'm not necessarily following the plan of this book the way it's outlined. I'm creating a plan that I feel like I can be successful with. Um, so I did all that and then I had a massage at 2.15 and it just was great. Like every time I get a massage, I'm like, this is literally one of the smartest things you've ever spent your money on. Like. I fell asleep multiple times. I'm pretty sure I started snoring at one point, but it's just, if you can find a way to fit that in your budget, I just highly recommend it because it is truly the most peaceful <laughs> and rejuvenating thing. And then I came home, cooked dinner right away so that I just had that out of the way and worked a little bit watched some more episodes of Sex in the City, ate the dinner, and then made sure I had time to go upstairs and read a little bit. And that was how I spent my Sunday. So it was a good Sunday. 
but now it's Monday and here I am I just got to work so um, I have a meeting today after school and I also have a manicure appointment at 445 so it's gonna be pretty busy but let me get in here get the day started Good morning, it is 8.52. I have about eight minutes left of my prep period. I just spent the bulk of that time making copies for tomorrow. Uh, copies of, let's sit you guys on top of some gum. Copies of the Greek and Latin roots that they're gonna be learning for this week and then also the chapter from the indigenous people's history of the United States for young people. Um, so now I'm back and I'm going to try and kind of use the time that I have before my next class to explain in a little bit more detail how um, the close reading assignment went. So on Google Classroom, I decided to make it an assignment because there were some resources I wanted to provide to them. Um, and again, I'm sharing this because I feel like it went pretty well for the first time. There was definitely some hand-holding with this first close reading assignment that I just finished telling my homeroom class won't necessarily be the case as the school year progresses. So I put it as an assignment on Google Classroom, but I let them know that they were going to log on to StudySync to complete the assignment and that they were going to submit it through StudySync and that they needed to create it needed to create the response on a Google Doc using StudySync, which hopefully I can show you um, somehow in a second. And then I gave them the prompt that is the same prompt that's going to be visible on study sync when they go there and then I gave them the requirements which is basically telling them that it needs to be a multi paragraph essay that has an introductory paragraph at least two evidence paragraphs maximum three and then a closing uh, paragraph and that they needed to plan it so they had to outline it I needed to see that the essay was planned prior to being written out just like we did together in class even though we only planned for a paragraph the strategies and the steps would be the same and then I let them know how it's going to be graded whether or not they outlined it whether or not their response reflects the use of the racer strategy restate answer cite evidence and restate again and whether or not the writing clearly contains a topic paragraph, transitional phrases for each evidence paragraph, and a closing paragraph. And then I gave them any resource that I thought would be helpful to them in the process. So these were the slides they worked on as a group to kind of select the text evidence that they thought would be the most helpful. And yes, they had access to their slides, as well as every other group's slides. And I told them like, I don't really mind that you have that, like it's there, you have all the resources you need. So that was a resource that they knew was provided to them. Um, the handout that goes over common themes, even though we had worked together to decide what we felt the theme was. Two handouts that give them different transition options. So this was one handout, this is from Step Up to Writing, so I didn't make it, I don't own it. I just have access to it because I've been trained years ago on step up to writing so i still use the resources and these are technically elementary resources but they they still help at the middle school level that's the second page of transitional uh, phrases or sets that they could use a race poster that reminds them of what it all means this is not mine i got this from my co-worker so i cannot <laughs> link it for you and then I showed them how to double space on a Google Doc, but it turns out that that wasn't really necessary because when they submit it through StudySync, uh, StudySync just formats it the way that it wants it formatted, but I left it there because I still feel like it's a good thing for them to know how to double space things using a Google Doc since that's generally the standard when turning in a typed response you know, at the high school level and beyond. So as far as integrating it with Google Classroom, I was able to do that because I have always seen that as an option when they would open up a close reading assignment on study sync it has a little button and it's not going to show for me now because I've already done it but when they open the assignment and the in the little space where they would type their response there's something that says integrate Google Classroom or launch with Google class or not Google Classroom Google Docs like there's a little Google Docs icon off to the right and then once you click that it'll take you through the steps so that going forward the assignment um, provides a Google Doc for them to type on that has the prompt pre-typed out for them and then when you go in to grade it you are able to grade it um, 
on the Google Doc and leave them comments. So let me see if I can open one so you can see what it looks like on my end. Okay, here we go. So this is what it looks like on StudySync when I go in to grade it. All right, so this is what it looks like on StudySync when I go in to grade it. So this person typed it on a Google Doc, but then when they finished and went back to StudySync to refresh, it just pre-populated what they typed and it takes out the double spacing. Um, so it just goes back to single space when it ends up there. When I wanna grade it, I just click on this and it'll take me to the Google Doc where I am then able to leave like my comments for the student. Um, so that was nice and that was helpful but then I put the overall score on study sync itself and I'm gonna have to like if in the process this seems to be cropped and edited a funny way it's because I need to make sure the student's name is not present so that worked really well and I'm glad I got them all set up so before everyone started responding to the prompt we all walked through those steps together there were a couple kids that still somehow didn't do it on a Google Doc so in the feedback I gave them I made sure to tell them that this was supposed to be done on a Google Doc and make sure next time that they do that so um, most of the kids worked independently I felt like they had a lot of resources available to them. I felt like we had done a really good job as a class walking through how to respond to a prompt. And then the kids that need extra support, because I do have students on an IEP that just require extra support for different reasons, I pulled them to the side and they, well, they worked with an aide first where they had planned out what they wanted to say in terms of what text evidence they wanted to use. And then when I worked with them, I would say, okay, what was the first piece of text evidence that you guys chose? And they would tell me, and then I would ask them in individually to just verbalize why do you think that piece of text evidence is an example of greed and they would verbally tell me and then I would say okay take what you just told me and you're gonna write that down in sentence format and so um, all they had to do was you know think about what they said and then figure out how to put that into a sentence that way their response is reflecting their own thought and they've had the support of identifying the text evidence in a group setting and outlining everything and picking their transitional phrase phrases with the teacher and so the independent part is them taking that and then writing their thoughts in sentence format so i felt like when i graded their work it was still a reflection of the work that they did or it was a reflection of their thoughts and not everybody got the same grade because some of them did a little bit better with explaining it in sentence format than others so um, that's how it went. Did that help in my explanation? But overall, I think I said Saturday that the class average was like a 10. I briefly talked to my homeroom class this morning about like the common things that I noticed as an issue. And that's all I can say right now because I just realized it's time for me to let the next class in and the bells are off. So I'll talk to you guys later. It's probably about 5.15 on Tuesday. And um, I'm just really popping in to say hi. Obviously, I didn't vlog the rest of the day yesterday, but the la since the last clip that I took, which I believe was on my prep period yesterday, trying to explain to you how I connected um, study sync to their Google accounts, I have not had like a minute of time to even pick up the camera. I taught, I left. No, I taught, I had a meeting, I had a manicure, I came home, I couldn't get things edited and uploaded, I had a meeting this morning, I taught, had a meeting, came home, cooked, now I'm going to Orange Theory. That's just, <laughs> um, and I know I won't edit and upload tonight because I, I just can't, like I just haven't been able to catch my breath all week because it's just meeting 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 teach 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 and I'm proud of myself for putting myself first <laughs> like I really wish I can upload but like last night I was like you have to take care of you before you take care of anyone else and at this moment taking care of me is letting go of like the task of editing um, at night because there's other things I need to do to keep myself sane for the next day so hi <laughs> and bye at some point when I can catch my breath, I will kind of catch you up on what we've been doing. Um, but that moment just isn't today. So I have to go, <laughs> put on my socks, work out, talk to you soon. <laughs> it is Wednesday, it is 3.05 and I'm actually going to go home soon to work. Um, I just have no words for how little time I had the la I don't even, what day is this? The last 
couple of days. Um, so I know I popped in really quick before I went to Orange Theory yesterday to say hey, hi. I don't really have time to say anything else. Um, but it just like I knew this week was going to be busy because I had a lot of meetings. But I don't think I realized how I would literally have no time to even think about vlogging, let alone um, editing and uploading. I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's okay. It's just I was that busy and I really am working on putting like, like my general well-being first and just remembering that it's okay if you don't um, um, fulfill the mental commitment you made for yourself when it comes to things like YouTube that isn't necessary or it's not a must do it's something that I choose to do so um, just to give you an idea on Monday I had a meeting right after school at 245 and then right when that meeting ended I had to leave to go get my nails done which doesn't sound important to most but it's important to me it's like something that I do and like I just want to show you these I just love them I don't know if it's doing a good job of like giving you the full effect but there's like a foil overlay on it and so I went and did that my manicure was at 445 and then I, by the time I got home because where I get my nails done is right next to where Megan lives so after I finished her and I like just met up outside the nail salon and caught up for uh, a bit and then by the time I got home it was after 730 it was close to 8 so of course I shower I get my clothes out for the next day eat dinner and make sure like I was somewhat prepared to teach the next day and then it was bedtime then I woke up Tuesday morning had to get to school early because I had a meeting at 7 15 for the whole house system we're gonna open up a student store where kids can use their points to purchase items and so we're just trying to get the logistics of that taken care of so I had that meeting until 7 15 that meeting lasted all the way until the first bell then I taught the whole day <laughs> couldn't even talk to you during prep because I was scrambling trying to make sure I got things done that I didn't get to get done before school taught the whole day then I had IXL training at 2 30 and that went all the way until 4 then I had to talk to my principal really quick then I had to hustle home to see if I could cook dinner before my orange theory class which is where you caught me um, heading off to and then I have an orange theory class from 5 30 to 6 30 then I came home showered got ready for the next day I had to finish cooking because most of my dinner was cooked but not all of it then I ate it and then I had to make sure I was prepared had slides and everything ready for today and then I woke up early and just got here early just because I felt like I needed just some quiet time in my classroom uninterrupted um, to kind of get my thoughts together for the rest of the week so that's where I've been and it, it just like I said on Monday it has helped me to just realize like you know you have a great community of people on this channel they are all very supportive and in many cases are telling me you guys are telling me to like slow down calm down you're gonna burn yourself out and so I'm just listening to you guys and really like I had to tell myself a couple times yesterday right now you have to put yourself first and what you need to feel sane and good about the day tomorrow so here I am with a moment to spare I'm gonna leave in a little bit um, but I think on Monday I was talking to you about study sync and how I integrated the close read assignment on study sync to their Google Drive and that's not something that I created that's just a feature that you have available to you on study sync so I shared that we've now moved on to the next passage which is sorry wrong number we don't do a whole lot with that um, aside from talking about the format because this is a play um, we read the clip from study sync but it is not the greatest it's a very short clip that's not the most exciting thing um, but we listen to it anyway and then we listen to the actual radio performance that was done back in 1945 which the kids always seem to enjoy because the woman that is playing mrs stevenson who is this neurotic lady that basically is overhearing the plot of her murder by these two hitmen on the phone um, she does a really good job of playing this neurotic character to the point where it's like almost com it is comical at some point parts because she is really hysterical um, so we did that today and then we did leaderless discussion for our article of the week and this week's article of the week is focusing on making Hispanic Heritage Month more inclusive and so when we were predicting what we thought the article was going to be about one moment 
Miss Robinson. Hi. Um, I don't think you came to my classroom. No, oh, it's okay. You too. Bye bye. Wrong number. Sorry, wrong number. Um. Oh, so it was about inclusion. And so when we were predicting about it, I was asking them, what do you think this article is going to be about? And a lot of them thought it was going to talk about like um, getting more people to want to participate and celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. But the article was actually talking about making it more inclusive so that the depiction of who we recognize during this month doesn't all look the same. Like it was basically saying a lot of times Afro Latinx people, um, more Latin American based people are not what's visible in the media and then it's oftentimes more of the Spanish side or the more um, European looking side for lack of a better term and how we needed to change that because people are no longer identifying as Hispanic slash white and that they're identifying in different ways so it was an interesting article and brought up a lot of different interesting conversation in class and when it comes to talking about culture and race and things like that in class, I feel like those are the kinds of opportunities that you could use to kind of just make those conversations a part of your regular curriculum without having it be a project or like this elaborate thing, just allowing those conversations to happen. So today we did leaderless discussion with that. For the most part, it went well. Um, and... We were going to get into some more history, but the next thing I want to do, I just feel like is just mentally labor intensive and neither one of my classes was in a mental space to even do this. So we didn't do it. So I think I showed you this book last week. We're going to actually get to it um, tomorrow. Um, I was going back and forth on what chapter I wanted to use to talk about the Puritans and the Pilgrims and the Native Americans. And I've settled on chapter three the one that is titled the cult of the Co uh, covenant there are other chapters that do a good job as well but that one is the most closely in line with what we've just recently talked about with other resources and so i'm going to use the peeling the fruit activity from this book making thinking visible and i've done this once before it went okay. I, I mean, I definitely feel like it could have gone better because it was my first time doing it. Um, I'm still going to use the same handout, but I modified what that handout looked like because it had pre-filled in um, questions that were put in there by the person that made this TPT product. So I just white, white it out. I don't know if that's grammatically correct. Took white out to those questions because I have different ones. And then, of course, you know how much I love looking for templates on Canva. I just went on Canva to see if they had like a fruit template. Like I literally just typed in fruit <laughs> and I found this. So that's just the cover. It's America's origin story, colonists and the Native Americans. And so these are the different layers of the fruit they're going to peel, speaking in the metaphor. Uh, so for the skin portion, this is where you're just looking at the topic in a very superficial way. Like, what do you already know? What do you see at face value? The question I want them to respond to is, what have many people been told about the origin story or discovery of America? Most people know about that. The next layer is under the skin. Um, that question is going to be, what is the reality of the origin story as it relates to the experience of Native Americans? Um, next is building explanations. Is the origin story of America about exploration and discovery or invasion and displacement? And we need to put a question mark there. I can't do it with, <laughs> hold on. There we go. And I'll probably ask them to indicate why they chose what they chose. Next level of questioning is them making connections. How does this part of our history show up in our experiences today? Then they look at different viewpoints. What would someone on the other side of the debate think? So if they said the origin story is about exploration and discovery, then on the varying, what is it called, different viewpoints, they would then think about, well, what do people that believe it's more about invasion and displacement, what would they say? Vice versa, if they said it's more of an invasion and a displacement story, then what would people that believe it's more about exploration and discovery have to say? So that's what they would do there. And then at the very end, just like what is the heart of the topic or what is the core issue 
here with this particular part of history. So I was gonna do that today, but if you saw my classes today, not both, like I would say my homeroom class was, I don't know, they were just off today, but they were not in a mental space to do something like this. Like this takes a lot of like mental work. Um, and it, yeah, they just weren't in a place to do it. Let's just say that. And then my switch class, we got distracted. We were having a long conversation about other things. And so all we really had time to do was leader list discussion. So we're gonna do this tomorrow. And plus, I want a little bit more time to kind of like, is the word ruminate over this lesson? Because I haven't done this before in this format. And I wanna make sure I'm 100% satisfied with the questions that I chose. So the combination of me still thinking like, are there other questions I wanna ask? and them not being in a mental space to do it, it would have just been like a recipe for a disaster. So um, that has been what I've been up to the past couple of days, just being in meeting after meeting and then not when I'm not in a meeting teaching and then just trying to stay calm and sane. I am looking forward to this three day weekend that we have coming up. We don't have school on Monday. It's not for Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day or anything like that. I think it used to be, um, but it's no longer that like we stopped recognizing that, but I also know that they didn't want to take a day off from teachers. And if you're a teacher, this is right around the time of the year where you're like, you know what, I'm just really tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. I need a moment. Um, and so I really envy the people that have fall break. But then at the same time, I think if you have fall break, you don't get a full week off for Thanksgiving. So I don't know, but that's about it. I'm going to head out now. Um, I still feel like I can say I have vlogged every day because I have the footage from the past couple of days and it will be put together with this. Um, so yeah, hopefully the rest of the week slows down and we can just go from there. So that's it. I just didn't have a moment to come up for air. So if you enjoyed this vlog that <laughs> incorporated multiple days, please give this a thumbs up. If you too are feeling extremely tired and exhausted and needing a break of some sort, feel free to give this a thumbs up or make a comment. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And if you're not following me on Instagram, head over there, follow me at Smarty Style. And as always, I hope that you guys are well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you guys tomorrow, I think, I'm pretty sure. I'll see you tomorrow.